Welcome to the Fort Polk Podcast. In this episode, we're taking a deep dive into OPSEC or operational security. OPSEC is all about common sense security measures that protect our sensitive information from getting into the wrong hands. January is OPSEC month at Fort Polk, which means we are taking a closer look to make sure everyone understands just how important OPSEC is to keep us safe. Today's guests are Miguel Mike Guajardo and Sherry Johnson, and they are security experts here at Fort Polk. So join us as we explore operational security. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're listening to this podcast, because I am happy that you are actually listening. And <laughs> I just wanted to welcome our guests, Mike and Sherry. Hey, how's it going? How's it going? Uh, yeah, well, I got your mics you. turned on and everything. I'm awesome. just on top of things today. So <laughs> operational security, you know, I used to, uh, I used to do, um, income briefs or newcomers briefings and OPSEC's, uh, OPSEC was one of the things that I would brief on um, because it's like some of the simplest things about operational security are uh, some of the most overlooked like, uh, hey, my husband's coming home today on the on or at Alexandria with his group with his troops and all that stuff. He'll be there. And, yeah, I can't wait for him to see him. I'm, I'm leaving now so I could go pick him up at four. What it's like, you know, you really don't want to say things like that because you're not the only one listening and you're not the only one looking at your your Facebook account. And I would always tell him it's like, don't don't tell them, don't advertise troop movements because no one wants to ha know when you're having a movement. Right. Absolutely. Exactly. And nobody got my joke. Yeah. <laughs> a movement. I got you. It's like nobody wants to know a movement. Yeah. Ah, come on. Come on. Anyway, so uh, Mike, uh, you work over at uh, DPTMS. That's correct. And you are a security expert on OPSEC. I wouldn't say expert, but so definitely. So why, why aren't you teaching the OPSEC 2 courses? Well, that's because they like to bring in outside uh, experts that have a lot more experience when they travel around with different installations and they get... But know, it takes too long to get a class going here. It does. I have to run the website and everyone that actually has publishing rights on the website has to have the OPSEC 2 course. That's and uh, for somebody like me with ADHD and, and <laughs> can't write and all this stuff, um, that's a hard course because the, the final question is, is an essay question. That's correct. And I've never been good at essays, and that's why I don't like going back to college for gen ed. <laughs> no, it's very important. that uh, I think that it's very good that they have these guys come over here because, again, I think it brings a lot of different perspective than just ours from Fort Polk. You know, you got these guys that are traveling, these teams that travel around and go to different installations and pick up other things that they can share with the class. It was a, it was a really good course. It yeah. really was. And um, I learned a lot. And now I can be an OPSEC officer. That's correct. But I not. I'm just a <laughs> I'm a webmaster. I'm a master of the web, the internet, yeah. the interwebs. And Sherry, Sherry, uh you are a, a special a specialist, a, a tech special uh security expert and <laughs> I'm just. I wouldn't just, say tech. There's a uh, no. quick, big short between the seat and the keyboard. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I get all tongue tied when I'm trying to talk because I talk way too fast. It's like <laughs> I have to slow my breathing and my talking down. <laughs> and uh, which are you, you're not? Are you with DPTMS also? Okay. I, I am. Yes. Yeah, because I was looking. I was looking at your signatures, and I don't think yours is in there, hmm. Hmm. or in your. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what is your what is your main job uh, to do with OPSEC and and uh, and the like? Well, a big part of what we do is, uh, as you mentioned, as far as social media is, kind of seeing what's going on and listening to hear what people are talking about. Are you out there stalking the the social media sites? And she stuff? does. Oh, <laughs> I was wondering who that was all over my site. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> it's like a hobby of hers. <laughs> oh, okay. It's like I'm looking at you through the bedroom window. It's like, yeah, oh, let's Sherry, just is that that. You? <laughs> Get, Sherry, get out of my yard. <laughs> so, so you're over there. Uh, so you're monitoring uh, social media and and the internet and all that stuff to see what's going on. Yeah. And um, there's some things that that um, 
a lot of people don't even realize are uh, OPSEC violations. And one of them is this new CUI, which uh, people don't understand what CUI is. There used to be classified and then uh, all these different ratings. But, but classified would be for one branch, and then another branch would call it something else, and another branch would call it something else. So they just brought it all under, and they said controlled unclassified information, right. or CUI, CUI. Right. So now that's all over everything. And if you have something that says Cooey, you can't put that out on the Internet. That's correct. correct. It is not for release. That's so you correct. have to make sure that it goes through the right channels and, and it doesn't have it. And that's one of my biggest things that I have to do when, when publishing the uh, website is to make sure that we don't have any Cooey, which is just, I like the word Cooey. <laughs> hey. What you doing? Nothing. Cooey. Nope. Never quite heard it say like that, but <laughs> what, Yeah, no, it's kind of catchy, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> I had to think for a minute. What was he, what is he talking about? The well, that's why I explain it. Yeah. Yeah. We try not to we try not to stay or we try to stay away from uh, acronyms and initialisms. Right. And uh, and people don't know the difference between acronyms and initialisms, but that's a different point. And uh Cooey, I just I I don't know. I, I've always said Cooey. I like no, it's, it's not catchy. called. It's not called Cooey. Uh, I've just never said it that way. I'm saying really something. To it. What, what do you? C-U-I. Oh, C-U-I. C-U-I. That's it. Uh, no, I don't like that's. That's an initialism. Cooey is an acronym. I think it's uh, just part of our environment, our world. You know. Right. Yeah. I'm. I'm more into speed and talking fast, and I can't. I can't say. I'd be, be up here going like. <laughs> it's like watching a foreign film. <laughs> right. <laughs> Subtitles. <laughs> It's like, blah, 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 Jeff, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I know they're talking about me. <laughs> so we've got um, all the OPSEC and January, January, even though it's the end of January, it's still considered OPSEC month. That's correct. And uh, even though that we, sh- even though we should be practicing OPSEC uh, year round and some of the other things, I don't even know. Uh, there's just so many things that people want to put out on social media and a lot of it that's my biggest problem is with people in their social media accounts like just saying too much Uh, and i don't know if it's opsec or not but i know it's i i am positive that it is um uh, empathy when if somebody dies and then everybody out there wants to be the first one to to spread the word and it's like um, you don't want to spread. The last thing you want to hear is that somebody you love died on the Internet. Exactly. Uh, you right. want to wait until the family is notified first. Let them experience, or, you know, whatever. Just it, it, that's the hardest one. I, and I don't know if that is um, OPSEC or not, but it is um, it is one of my pet peeves. No, and it, it, it's very important uh, with that considering that type of event, uh, especially when your loved one is deployed and you hear about that through social media. I mean, some of the good commanders that I've deployed with um, immediately put out the requirement not to discuss this until, you know, they've been notified appropriately and stay off your phone or stay out of the Internet cafes so that they can do it, you know, accordingly and not through social media. Yeah, it's um, it's just like, releases press releases they're all the same it's it's like until uh next kin has been notified and um it's just it just breaks my heart when things like that happen and not to mention you have to worry about the um rumor mills and spreading incorrect information correct right. like uh when chuck norris died and everyone's sitting there saying r.i.p chuck norris and all that stuff and it's like um he comes onto the internet and says, I'm still alive. Yeah, a lot of those social <laughs> fake deaths that they like to put yeah. out there, right? <laughs> it's yeah. like Chuck Norris died and kicked his butt and came back. <laughs> well, another thing is that people don't think about when they try to post those items, whether or not they have good intentions or not, is it creates a vulnerability of where our troops are and things like that. So they need to be cognizant of those things as well. Ooh, big word. Cognizant. <laughs> Let me get my dictionary out. <laughs> Not bad for a girl from Rose Pine. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> so we got uh, OPSEC. It's also known as procedural security, which there's so many words and so many same things. That, you know, it's just uh, they they all say the same things. And, and it was and OPSEC. Even it's they say uh, procedural security, OPSEC security was was um, 
invented or, or designed during the Vietnam War. But yet I can see posters from World War II saying loose lips sink ships, right. which is OPSEC. Right. And, Correct. I mean, everyone's heard of that. Um, now, the um, like I said earlier, uh, if if you can see somebody's profile or information or if you can hear it, other people can. And that's one of the big things for uh, or that's the main big thing for especially social media uh, about OPSEC is you're not the only one listening or you're not the only one seeing this. And if you can see it, someone else can see it. And if someone else can see it, then they can send it to somebody else that hasn't seen it yet. And that's one of the, you know, the biggest uh, challenges that I think any organization, whether it's military, Department of Defense, uh, or any commercial environment is that, you know, once it's put out there, it's out there. You know, you can't pull it back even though you want to. So. Oh, yeah, you can. You can. I think the kids nowadays uh, know about that stuff now. <laughs> it's right. like once that picture's out there, it's out there That's forever. Right. You can't take it off. The um, now there's other parts of OPSEC um, to do with uh, like I was I was teasing you a little earlier about the technical part, but IT is a, a big a big OPSEC kind of thing. What yes. uh, a court, like what are some examples of of um, the IT OPSEC well, stuff? I think it, I think everybody sees it. The first thing that when they log in, you already have uh, a disclaimer that's sitting there on the computer. If you log into it, you also have banners that are there just to remind the user that hey, some of this information you know, should be considered, you know, whether or not it's sensitive or not before you send out an email or before you have a conversation, or even if somebody's sitting in your office that doesn't work there, that we have lots of uh, identifiers on the computer to remind us that, hey, try to think of this when you're having a conversation. I call that shoulder surfing. <laughs> it's like, hey, what's that? It's like, well, it's nowadays like, <laughs> we got 25, 27 inch monitors. It's kind of hard to cover that. Oh, those know? are still small. I've got yeah. 55 and exactly. 80 inch. Yeah. Exactly. I just hook up my TV to the, it's, we're going backwards now. It's like, we used to have, we used to have the Atari hooked up to the TV. You have to change it to channel three and then flip a switch in the back and you can play your games. Now it's, and then we went to, nope, you have to have a computer monitor and you, you can only plug a computer computer monitor into a computer. Now we're back to being able to plug it into TVs. Right. And now we can have a 55 inch 4k monitor right there in front of you. And it's just like a giant screen TV where now I, I, th I threw myself off <laughs> there. You're talking about it. Oh, it. That's right. right. <laughs> but where he was picked on, you know, it's like all these banners. You also have to consider in our world, we have what we call a need to know. So you should really think about some of those things. Does somebody really need to know this amount of details for information? So a lot of your posts, like, for example, y'all's um, and other organizations and units that are on Fort Polk, what they post onto social media is vetted prior to. But a regular Jane Doe out in the community posts what they want to say. And it's not really always vetted. So that's always something to consider. Yeah, that's the that's the rumor mill. And and, and rumors travel at the speed of light. <laughs> it's like you, you could tell a truth out there and a rumor out there. And the rumor will make it around the world three times before the truth makes it to the first person. Exactly. And, um, well, that and, you know, I noticed it today a lot, especially with the younger generation, is that social media is almost their source of information. And, you know, I always challenge my children to say, hey, you know, but how reliable is that? You know, you're looking to find out what's really going on. But in fact, there could be a complete opposite story to that. So somebody's putting information out there that may not be completely factual. And it's interesting to see how kids rely on that sort of thing to get their facts or their information before they go looking for it. And I'm always trying to figure out what the next big social media is. It, I, I mean, I'm stuck on Facebook because I'm old and, and that's what old people do nowadays, apparently. And, uh, and I, you know, I'm, I'm getting to the point where it's, I'm, I'm just going to go back to my space. <laughs> <laughs> Forget it. There's too many new things out there. The, um, but now we've got Snapchat, which yeah. it shows up and then it disappears. And, yep. and, uh, uh, TikTok. TikTok, which I won't even get into because, uh, we're not even supposed to be using that and for good reasons. Have you seen the, the thing that you have to click the, the agreement as like, we agree, you agreed that you will be monitored all the time and we'll figure out everything you're doing and where you are and what your interests are and who you're talking to. It's right. like, um, no, thank you. And some of these things actually track you too, as well. Yeah. Like where you're going and your device and if it's on and even, you can even know how much power a person's cell phone has on it and text them and say, hey, your battery's at 10%. <laughs> 
just in case you wanted to know. Oh, hey, thank you. Yeah. Uh, how did how did right. get, get out of my head? <laughs> Terms of agreement. Terms of agreements. Like, there's there's an episode of South Park <laughs> about the terms of agreement. It's like nobody reads that. It's like it's, it's oh, you don't want to know. Yeah. You don't want to know what you agreed to. The but there is uh, uh, one of the words that you guys like to use is robust, robust security, um, and but that's just not about information and right. um, other physical or personnel. It, what exactly, or give me a general idea of, of some of the things that OPSEC can include in, you know, cybersecurity and right. industrial security, industrial espionage. I know those, I know of that one. Right. And then, of course, you know, what, sh what Sherry and I do as well as personnel security. I mean, that's a part of OPSEC if you think about how we're introducing an individual into the system of checking to see you know, how their background is, because we want to see if these people are trustworthy. So OPSEC, uh, personnel security plays a part in OPSEC because we vet individuals before we either allow them on the installation or we're going to provide them with the clearance, you know, in the name of, on behalf of the government. So personnel security plays a huge part in that as well. Yeah, don't, don't try going through that gate if you have a warrant. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, and there's another great example of what operation security is: the guards and the checks that we do before. Yeah, they do a great job out there. They yeah. really do. It's like uh, I'm impressed, and I always, I always thank them. Well, I like to try to thank them, but they don't always listen. <laughs> they say, "Oh, right, here comes Jeff again." So. That and by the time, by the word robust, I think what was intended by that statement is that um, you can have a large physical presence or a technical presence of security, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to protect you operationally because the greatest, you know, weakness that we have is the individual, the, the, the insider, the person who knows that humans, we're, we're our greatest threat to any kind of security. So by having the most robust, it doesn't really, you know, give you that sense that you're going to completely avoid something happening. And that's one of the biggest, uh, the biggest, uh, weaknesses that I can see is it's not the information that you give out. It's it's something or something that you mention is might not be um, sensitive or that much. But if you put out that and then somebody else puts out something else and then somebody puts out something else, somebody that's paying attention, you know, right. whose job it is out there to try to do this or somebody else like me, <laughs> because I do it all the time. Um, it's like, wait a minute, if you're this, if you're A and you're B and you're C, I could put all those together and I can tell what, where, when. Uh, it's, it's, just, it's just amazing that people don't think that because, oh, I didn't say when they were coming home. Right. I just said, my, I can't wait for him to come home soon. And then I hear somebody else say, oh, yeah, there's a we got I've got to drive the bus out to out to the airport uh, to pick up a bunch of guys. And it's like, OK, well, uh, uh, hey, man, can you come over this weekend? No, I'm busy. I'll be I'll be, uh, I'll be right. working this weekend for uh, some. It's like, ah, OK, so you're not only coming in on Saturday, but you'll be in a bus and there will be a bunch of you together. And I can I, all I have to do is sit by the roadside. Right. That's it. Exactly. I mean, that's why they even coined it. OPSEC in Vietnam is because they realized that all these little pieces of information were being put together and then that puzzle creates the picture of what's going on. Right. And you see that a lot, even, and again, it goes back to social media because when you do look up OPSEC, that is one of the first things that does come up is social media and our ability to put information out there. And like you said, Jeff, you know, I can just say, hey, that I'm going into work um, on Saturday. And the next person on Facebook goes, yeah, um, I'll be there till late. And you start collecting that information together and you can basically paint yourself a picture or an idea of what's going on. Yep. And, and nobody wants the, the end results of some, some nefarious people out there. And uh, there are some mean people out there and, and uh, some evil people. Evil exists. And especially, especially in our line of work because uh, we're not friends with everybody. <laughs> very true. Very, very true. true. Um, so, uh, as a uh, as a operational specialist or security specialist, um, your job is to raise awareness. That's correct. Of these types of uh, these types of things, and what are some of the examples that you would like to raise awareness about? Well, with OPSEC, I think you know 
we like to just, you know, tell the public or the community that we do a lot of training here. Um, so be cognizant of, you know, talking about certain things that involve training and who's coming and when they're going to be here. Cause that's obviously our biggest, uh, mission here in Fort Polk is to train soldiers to get ready to deploy. Yeah. The JRTC yeah. is, uh, is uh, pretty important. And, you know, keep mind of where it is that you're having these discussions, like not in the PX or in the shop at, or ha- hanging out the, you know, Dunkin Walmart. Donuts. Yeah. <laughs> and also, right. Very true. Uh, in public as well, because that information is, could be very sensitive for that unit or organization that's coming here. So and it's like, now, um, we've got CUI, mm-hmm. which takes all the classified and all that stuff, but there's other parts, there's other classifications like FOUO, oh, which is for official use only. No, that's gone. That's what it's, CUI replaced. And so, it, it's, so all of these little things have been replaced with CUI. That's so it's correct. all under a giant umbrella and um, that's good. Now, uh, the other parts, there's other things uh, like, um, uh, what is it, the release, uh, public release, uh, uh, 1976 was... Uh, Freedom of Information. Freedom of Information Act. That's it. That's, yeah. <laughs> Which is really sad because I know the date, but I don't know the name. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it happened in 76. <laughs> but, so all of that falls under... Well, it can. Yeah, it can. It can. It, you know, we when we teach the class or when I've briefed it, you know, we don't try to make the information fit into a category that CUI covers, right? Um, we just need... It's going to stick. Yeah, it is. I know. It's going it, to stick. Well, <laughs> and so what we like to do when we train uh, our population or give a briefing, we just like to let them know that, hey... When you handle information, you have the ability to go and look and, and read the category and determine whether or not it needs to be. Because not all information needs to be CUI. Um, it just needs to be vetted and ensured that it's not. Now, there's a, you know, OPSEC should be done as not as a conscious thing, in my opinion. I don't think OPSEC should just be used as a conscious um, thing that we should all pay attention to. It should, it should come second nature. Right. It really should. I mean, if we put it into practice enough, it'll become a habit, and then we, and then it's less of a problem um, that we don't have to worry about all the time because we are consistently on top of OPSEC. So uh, you don't you don't say certain things, and just and what I've noticed is uh, just because someone has the right to know. <laughs> It doesn't mean they need to know it. That's correct. It's, it's like, uh, well, I have a top secret clearance. It's like, yeah, but. Right. That's oh, a absolutely. need to know. That's a, there's <laughs> also the need to know because we can find ourselves in a, you know, a very bad situation where you know, somebody uses, whether it's their clearance or rank or grade, it doesn't really matter. It's, it really comes down to, do you have both? Do you have a need to know? Are you going to, this is part of your job. Do you need to know this because you, or you work or something? So yeah, it's definitely. See, it. my I have to change my uh, I have to change my position title to uh, busybody, know it all <laughs> kind of stuff. It's like, do you need to know? Yes, I do. Why? It's part of my job. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry, you got to stop talking so much. We can't get get a word in edgewise ah, around right? you. I know, right? So what are what is your biggest your biggest issue with trying to get uh, training people for OPSEC? What do you find to be uh, the biggest problem not taking it seriously absolutely um, I, I could agree with that yeah I think uh, if they actually like I agree with you as far as what you said a while ago it should be a unconscious effort however it has to be that conscious effort first for it to become that routine of an unconscious effort you do it enough and it becomes a habit correct and uh, habits are hard to break whether they're good or bad. And uh, I prefer to have good habits. And I am a very, I'm a creature of habit. So I go through the same things. And that's that's another problem that I have uh, because I do the same thing all the time. That could become a problem right. with OPSEC. Exactly. Because they will know, or people will know that you leave your house this time, you go down this road this time, and you're over here at this time, and you right. do this. And, and at this moment in time, you should have this much information. And uh, I, there, are, there are so many situations out there that I see uh, that people don't even think about. It's like, hey, uh, like it was brought up a scenario. It's like, okay, this, this guy off post, um, would like to ha- get a, uh, a copy of the newspaper. 
And it's like, okay, well, I don't have a problem. It's like, yeah, but I can't get on post. So can you just bring me a, a newspaper? Yeah, no problem. It's like, um, yeah, just to make sure that it's, it's protected from the weather and stuff, just put it in an envelope. And so I go out there and I hand him this envelope while he's got somebody across the street taking pictures of me handing this guy an envelope. Uh, and now all of a sudden he's got perception. It's perception. Perce- right. Yeah. It's all perceived as, uh, I just handed him some kind of secrets. Now they're blackmailing me. It's like, well, if you don't, we'll release these pictures. And, and I'm like, well, it was a newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> then why was it in an envelope? Well, he asked me to put it in an envelope. Well, then why was he paying you? Well, it's delivery charge. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the big thing. Uh, a picture with no words uh, just leaves it open for interpretation. And, you know, with not fully understanding that situation, someone can easily interpret that as, as a nefarious act of some sort because they know you work on post and that gentleman does not. Right. Yep. So. So, I mean, there, there's it, there, all this training that we go through. I mean, a lot of it just blends into one big old it's like, well, no, that's not this, and but that's that. And, you know, you do have to know this, but not for this reason. And I get all of mine mixed up. And it's like, well, I know I'm not supposed to do that, but I don't know if it's because of OPSEC or um, or if it's because of strategic moves or if it, is it because of blackmail or anti-terrorism. Or <laughs> exactly. Well, well, when, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. When you bring that part up, um, like not everything is just social media. I mean, your LinkedIn account can make you a huge vulnerability because you list all the experience of things that you've had. So people have to think just a little bit bigger, not go outside the box. Don't think of your standard stuff. You know, there's pros and cons to, you know, putting information out like that. (laughs) But, uh, you know, and then of course, who's looking at it? Because you do, and you probably know, you'll get information or you'll get uh, emails from people that, hey, I saw this on your profile. I'm interested and then start calling you and start, you know, harassing you. Yeah, kind of like a um, uh, phishing. Yes, right. exactly. Email, uh, email, uh, phishing, whaling, um, right. harpooning, uh, spear phishing. Uh, I've got all these words for it, <laughs> and it all goes through all of that training. Yep. Uh, somebody or they'll send you something, and or they'll make it look like somebody else. And I and I have to tell. All of my other friends and all of family, especially family, because, uh, you know, I'm the technical person right. in the family and they aren't. And it's, they, they'll say, what, what? I got this email and I look at it. And it's like, no, no, it's not. I got this email from PayPal. And, yeah. Yeah. The, tech. the, text oh, the from taxes. AT, you, get a, you get a text from AT&T per se, but, you know, it's a really funky number that's sitting on your phone. And you're like, exactly. Hey, click this link and provide us your account information so that we can help fi- fix your account. <laughs> There's a okay. there's some videos that you might like on YouTube. It's um, it's this guy that uh, scams the scammers. So they'll call oh, him up. Yeah. They'll call yeah. him up and they'll say, "We need access to your computer." <laughs> well, they're going. They're getting so good that you know, from emails to text messages. Now they have a lot of stuff. What they call deep fakes, where the, somebody on the phone will call you and it sounds exactly like somebody you think you know and it's not it, so and they're asking you know for help or an address or you know money or something like that and it, they do a very good job of it if you know impersonating well that's not people. good no it's not it's, and that technology has been out for quite some time and you do see you can see memes of like that where an individual sounds like another one and it's it's to the person who doesn't know any better it sounds just like them that and robocalling. I mean, robocalling oh, is huge. Hate and then those you, things. right? And then you're like, "Did you call me? No, it's because it's a robocall." Yeah, I've gotten people calling me back, exactly, saying, "Hey, you just called me, saying that's like no," and I have to explain to them. It's like, "No, that was a spoof number. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody was trying to scam you. I guarantee it was not me that called you. Just ignore the last call and do not answer any phone call from my number again because it's not me and I don't know you." Right. <laughs> it's like, hey, man, I'm in jail. I need some help. Can you send me gift certificate? No, <laughs> I'm not paying the IRS in gift certificates. Or a lot of uh, you've seen a lot of uh, Facebook accounts get you know taken. Oh, the, and then you know, of course, they're gonna reply to the contact list and say, hey, I need help. I'm your cousin, and so hey, can you send me some money through you know whatever app that they prefer. And so I take a look at that sometimes and go, okay, when was the last time I actually talked to my cousin? You know, it's been well over 30 plus years. So I'll play with them and say, hey, well, what were we doing last Christmas? And they'll make up some, 
it's a yeah. story. And I'm like, yeah, I got it. Oh, my God, you were there. Yeah. Yep. Uh, nope. <laughs> well, that and then malware, like from Messenger. Oh, my gosh, is this you? Or did you see who died? Actually, I got that from my uncle. And he start. it's like, oh, hey, how's it going? All right, hey, how's it going? And I got into this conversation, but, you know, it's like, first of all, I started noticing immediately first, he doesn't, he does, nobody contacts you out of the blue like that, but he said right. a couple of things and it's like, okay. So I started responding and then it's, and then he started saying, oh, did you notice the, that, uh, Bill Gates is going to give you lots of money if you just follow this. It's like, uh huh. Right. Yeah. And a lot of misspelling in that conversation. Exactly. Yeah, too. yeah. They're not, they're not Americans. And, yeah. So I, so I started messing with him. It's like, you're a bot. What? What do you mean? You're a bot. Mm-hmm. What? What do you mean? It's like you get in a loop because it's a it's a computer. It's, you're a bot. What do you mean? It's so like, yeah. So when you start asking questions that only you would know, then that's the, they know the the gigs up. So and then and then they got the same messages to my wife, and it's like oh jeez, her too, huh? And then the other ones I noticed is um, a lot of people sit there. It's like oh um, I've been hacked. My my account's been hacked. Don't accept any more friend requests from me. It's like no, you not have you've not been hacked. Your account is safe. You've been cloned. Yeah. There is a difference. Cloned means multiple right. use, and hacked means you are under uh, somebody else's control. And I try to tell them that. And or if they'll say, um, "Hey, uh, I got an email saying that um, that th- my PayPal account is is going to be um, is going to be charged this much." <laughs> and my favorite one is, "Do you have a PayPal account?" Right. Well, no. Well, then, no. Exactly. <laughs> Right. We need My, you to update your your, your social security financial. number has been suspended. Right. It's like really okay, cool. That's first. No <laughs> That's <taxes>. first. <laughs> yeah. It's like well, we need we need you to pay us in in uh, gift cards. It's like what? No, no. Yeah, I haven't seen that one in a while. Oh yeah, that they they've got some good ones out there. I I pay attention to all these stuff, and then it's brought to my attention by other people. It's like, hey, is this does this look accurate? It's like, no, because the IRS doesn't work off a of Gmail. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. And then it has dot UK or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So, right. TZ. It's like, yeah. Speaking of that, um, apparently they found a whole room. In, um, I think it was Nigeria, <laughs> filled with money. <laughs> it's like that Nigerian prince really didn't need help. <laughs> like, Nobody did cash the check. <laughs> I saw that. It's, it was a meme. It's like it was a big old pile of money in some Nigerian um, uh, apartment. <laughs> And it's like apparently that 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 prince that contacted you really did need yeah. your help. Do to me trying to get rid of this money. Nobody so we've got um, there now. There is a process. Uh, there is a process for OPSEC, and it's uh, from from my training that I remember going through the OPSEC two course and all the all the things that I pay attention to very closely and take notes down on. It's about five steps. Right. Five steps for uh, the procedures for. OPSEC, um, we can go through those and see what's going on with um, with some OPSEC, five steps. Now, um, the first step is to identify, uh, the, to identify the critical information. Right. And, um, but what is critical information? Right. Well, I guess that's why you have to identify it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> right. You know, looking at the information that, uh, you know, why is it important to you? Uh, whether it's personal, individually, or organization. I mean, because OPSEC can be applied to your daily life, not necessarily just to what we do for a living and here on Fort Polk, uh, because we like to protect our financial information. We like to protect our personal identifying information, right? So obviously that's important to us. We like to protect our Social Security cards, our birth certificates, and whatever else. So an individual can look at what they feel is important to them to keep from out of the hands of somebody else because it will cause them harm or financial harm. And you identify those things and then you start to move on through, okay, how do I protect that? And where am I going? You know, what are the step next steps? The other thing is um, um, when we do our cyber awareness training, uh, one of the scenarios in there is, uh, Hey, I, uh, I left my badge by my desk. Can, can you let me in? It's like, what, 
desk to you. <laughs> it's like, so what do you do? Do you a lot? Do you use your card to give them access and all that stuff? Right. That's part of the critical information is access to buildings. Exactly. So you got like, well, 350 is is pretty good. They're they're pretty secure and they've got the people up front and it's like they don't let you go by unless you have a badge or you get a badge. Did and, you uh, during your class? Did you get the opportunity to go visit um, other locations on post and then as a group and have a check? We literally walked into the back of the 24-hour shop at, uh, it was a group of five, probably four of us carrying clipboards, and they were taking in stock, so the door was open, so we're like, all right, well, let's just walk in to see what happens. We walked in, and we just kept our noses down to the check you know, check box and nobody said nothing to us. That's one of my, that's one of my things that I didn't know. We did not get to go on any kind of field yeah. trip in my class. No, we had to sit there and take notes. But, <laughs> um, but it is something that I tell people a lot is if you, if you want to see some, how secure some place is, walk onto a, a job site with a hard hat and a clipboard exactly. and nobody will nobody stop you. you. <laughs> right. And you can have some badge that didn't even belong to them. And as long as you look official, well, people assume. Look like you know what you're doing. Right. People assume. And we walked straight in from the back door all the way through the front and then told the manager, hey, nobody stopped us at all. Nope. I mean, when you see four groups of soldiers walk into the back stock room of the PX, <laughs> right? So it was interesting It was to a see. health inspection. <laughs> Yeah, from the yeah we did the services. same thing during the uh, physical security course. Yeah. And then I used to actually be a, a member of a loss prevention team for a major retail organization. And same, I mean, somebody walked in with through automotive, they took a whole bunch of stuff in a buggy, and the people in automotive were so nice, they even held the door open for them oh, to leave. Oh, how nice. I know. Wasn't it great? <laughs> I, I, I need this tire. What? For an inspection. <laughs> Wait, you met, you know what? I better I better do quality control and take four of them. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, but being alert, that's a thats a huge thing, is being alert and cognizant of your surroundings and things like that. So that's what you want to look out for. Right. And another thing, too, I think that just by those examples, people just need to really say something. You know, I know that sometimes people are just timid. They don't want if to. If you see something, say something. Right. Exactly. You know, they don't want to come off mean or whatever. Hey, cover that piece of paper up if you're not going to be. Yeah, you know, I'm a lot like that. And it's so. like I, I see things and I want to say something, but... At the same time, it's like, eh, I don't want to say anything. I, but um, like the other day, I saw somebody wearing a badge in the PX or at the food court. And it was right. actually yesterday. But the badge was flipped upside down, so you couldn't see what it was. And it was just, it. it's like, well, I'll just let her go with that one. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> but see, here's the thing. A lot of times people are afraid to say something when they see something because they may have done it before and someone didn't take them seriously. So the receiver of the information actually needs to take that seriously. So it might be something that they hear, you know, multiple times in a day that may not be a big thing to them. However, they need to make that person that reported it feel like it's something important. Otherwise, you're shutting all future communication down. So you have to leave that line of communication open. That, yeah. And also, we work in an environment where, and depending on the facility, you have a badge or you don't. Or you don't that you don't think about it. It's part of your uniform or it's part of just your everyday existence and forget, you know, we're human. We're, you know, so, you know, just saying, hey, you probably should put the badge in your pocket and you're like, oh yeah, I completely forgot I had it on because I was thinking about something. Yeah, we have to do that when uh, when taking video. Right. Uh, so it's like, oh, they're wearing their badge. So I either tell them to take it off or I have to blur it out on the video and stuff. And I've done that before. Right. Uh, but I mean, they were in the secure area where they were supposed to be wearing their badge. So I blurred it out, but if they're going to do it, it's like, okay. So it's like, okay, check, yeah. check, check, check. So, check, you check. know, you never know. It could be something intentional or unintentional and just having them just reminding them, Hey, you probably shouldn't wear it. Yeah. You know, now, uh, step practice. two, step two would be analyze the threat. Uh, and how do you analyze, how do you analyze a threat? I mean, mm, data. Uh, information that you have available to you. Uh, reports is a great example. Police reports often help with uh, assessing threats. Um, doing research on whatever particular threat is out there as well. Uh, using multiple uh, sources of information. Um, you know, go to the MPs or go to your uh, local law enforcement. You know, seek out that information from different sources in order to, you know, determine really what is a threat out there for you. And what about the vulnerabilities? Because that's step three is to, once you've analyzed the threats, now right. you have to analyze the, the vulnerabilities. Right. So where are we vulnerable? Well, 
access points. Um, right. That, and that's exactly what you're doing. You're looking okay. at those, those things right there, or even with a home. I mean, let's bring it back to the person, uh, the individual, not so much the installation is that you look at, you assess your domain the same way. Lock your doors. You're, right. You lock look your at windows. your doors. If your window is broken, you fix it, you know, uh, or you change the lock or something like Put that. Put a password on your uh, wire Wi-Fi. Right. Because those are vulnerabilities and you don't, and you want your information and your, your stuff protected. Now, once you get those, once you've analyzed and you, you, once you've identified your, your information and you've analyzed the threat and you've analyzed your vulnerabilities, um, now you've got to assess the risks. Right. And that, that would be step four. Right. So um, now when, when, when assessing the risks, it's you, basically you got to um, consider the vulnerabilities and assess the, um, the impact Right. Or damage, damage or, of the critical information. Right, or, or the likelihood stuff. of that risk actually, you know, what is the risk if that happens? That vulnerability is not uh, mitigated. So, you know, what are we at risk to lose? Um, information, uh, movement times. People. Uh, pe yes, exactly, people. Because we do have, you know, VIPs that do visit uh, Fort Polk on occasion. And so, you know, what is the risk if that information gets out or what could it be? So when you assess it that way, then you know, what appropriate measures you want to uh, impose on that or mitigate that risk with. So, and that helps you determine how much, how robust are you going to be versus, okay, that's really not too much of a risk. So, you know, that's not the top. Absolutely. And then um, once you have all this information, then you just got to apply it. That's right. And that's the final step, step five. And that's what we've been talking about all morning. Just is apply it. Just getting people out there to just create good habits. Uh, and it's that habit again. See, right. I, I, exactly. I, it's all, I brought it in a circle. Or, or routine. You know, <laughs> routine. What, what is your routine in the morning? Or what are we doing with the information that we utilize every day on a daily basis? And we have visitors that come in. Well, we turn our monitor off or reduce the window and position that, um, that customer in a, such in a manner that they can't see what we're looking at. So there's just different things of taking, knowing when information is sensitive and the risk of it being out there. What are you doing about it? And then implementing that. Yes, it seems. Well, I, I guess I've been paying more attention to it than I thought because I seem to know more than I thought that I knew. That's a good <laughs> but, thing. That's, class, that's a good thing. Class, class work. So I'm, I, I just pay attention now and it's like, okay, well, you watch out for this. What, what are you doing? You're doing this. <laughs> it's like, right. Well, I think it's just so important because today, now, we have access to so much information and we have the ability to put out information in so many different ways, you know, from the children. I mean, they're, they have all kinds of different ways to communicate. And so you got to just look at that. Yeah. I, I and, you know, I want to, I want to imp uh, just emphasize that this is not just for military people. That's correct. This is for family members, mm -hmm. for, for civilians, uh, for people that have nothing to do with, with the military, right. uh, you know, that, that corporate espionage and, and there's always somebody right. watching and you don't want to be a hard target. Well, you don't want to be a soft target. That's for sure. Right. Um, and which is just, Hey, you're in the area and we had the opportunity and because not everything's going to be a hard target, like a fenced off building right. that's guarded. Uh, and information is key is key. So you want to guard that information. Okay. And um, you want to just pay attention. If you see something, say something. Right. Pay attention to what you're saying. You don't want to give away uh, information that can lead to somebody you know or love getting hurt. Right. And that is exactly the way to think about it. What you're doing can cause harm. Not just harm for the government, but harm to people. It could also cost money. Exactly. Uh, you know, when we talk about that example you gave earlier of troop movements and deployments and things like that where you're paying thousands of dollars, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars to get that movement to happen. And all of a sudden now you have to change that because that information got out there. That costs time, it costs money, and a lot of people, you know. Well, that is, uh, that is very important. I hope, some, I hope people out there um, have gotten something out of this uh, because it, it's, it's 
actually it's is one of my higher um, priorities in life is safety for uh, for my loved ones and my friends right. and uh, everybody I know and I'd like to uh, thank you both for coming in Mike and uh, Sherry from DPTMS OPSEC yep. OPSEC month January and uh, we should be practicing that all year long not just Agreed. not just during the month and I would like to thank you all for coming in hey yeah woo! And if you guys out there have any kind of uh, ideas or if you'd like to ask any questions or anything like that, please leave it in the comments uh, below. Or uh, you can even email us at the at the Fort Polk Public Affairs Office. I'm Jeff England, and we will be back again with a brand new episode. And I'll be listening at you later. (laughs) 